Hi guys, my name's Ned. This is my dog Jai, who's currently leaving me. But today we're going to be starting work on a revenue forecasting tool for a fake construction company. And we're going to be building that tool completely using Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. But before we get into that, I recognize that we have some new faces here and I probably should introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my background and where I'm coming from. So starting off, I went to a school called Cal Poly San Luis Obispo that's on the central coast of California in wine country. And I had a blast there. But more importantly for my career, I studied business information systems, which meant that I learned Excel, yes, Excel, uh, Access, VBA, SQL, and then a little bit of Tableau. I also minored in statistics, which just kind of helped me out from a resume standpoint. After that, I moved to Portland, Oregon, where I started working for a mid-sized investment firm. And while there, I was responsible for some of their sales reporting. So I was doing a lot of reporting on inbound calls, uh, leads, lead generation, that kind of stuff. And I was using Microsoft Access and Microsoft Excel with a ton of VBA. I was there for just a little under two years, and then I caught my probably my big lucky break. I got hired to work at Nike's world headquarters, which was a really cool experience for a young 20 something. I was working on their finance business intelligence team, which meant that I was primarily helping to facilitate their close process, their forecast process, and their budget process. I started off as a financial systems admin and then I moved into just kind of like a straight up data and analytics role. Now, this is where I got introduced to a lot of modern tools. So it's where I learned Microsoft Power BI. It's where I picked up Alteryx. Um, it's where I really worked with some large scale databases for the first time. So Snowflake. It's also where I learned Azure. So it's where I built my first Azure DevOps pipeline. It's where I built my first logic app. It's where I built my first function app. It is where I learned what an AD group was. I learned a lot from that role. But after working there for about three years, I felt that it was time to move on and I really wanted to get into people management. So after hunting around for a little bit, I was offered the chance to lead a team at Nike's biggest competitor just across town over at Adidas's North American headquarters. And as you can see, it's equally as pretty as Nike's, although just a little bit smaller. Now at Adidas, what I was brought in to do was to migrate their existing Microsoft Access reporting into Power BI dashboards. Uh, and I was brought in to do that for the North American wholesale sales team. And I did that pretty successfully and then was eventually promoted from manager to senior manager, uh, at which point I was introduced to Databricks and I started to lead a migration from Microsoft SQL Server onto Databricks. Then again, after just a little under three years, I kind of got that itch and I moved on to my current role, which is at a Mars subsidiary. It's a large veterinary company here in the US. So with all that said, this is how I would start to build out a forecast or budgeting process for a fake construction company. I'm gonna take everything that I learned at the investment firm, Nike and Adidas, and pour it into this. So if you're excited for that, subscribe. Second, we're definitely not gonna be finishing this project in this video because it's 9.30 at night here and I go to bed at like 10. So uh, there's gonna be more videos coming, but all that to say, Let's get started and kind of see where we end up. So with any good BI project, we're actually not going to start in BI. We're going to start with planning and we're going to start with kind of starting to plan out what is it that we want to forecast for this fake construction company. And really, we're going to want to forecast income, right? And then COGS or cost of goods sold. Okay. Now, uh, after this, we can essentially use our income to minus our cogs to get to a gross profit number. 
And then if you really wanted to take this kind of a step further, which we're not gonna do, you would start to forecast out the operating expenses or your OPEX expenses, uh, which wouldn't be on an individual project level, but rather a construction company level, which could then let you get to your EBIT, right? Which then, and your EBIT would be your gross profit minus your OPEX expenses, right? So that would, if we pull this down, that's what your EBIT would equal. And then you would have your interest in taxes, right? And then that would give you your net income, okay? Now, we're not going to cover this, OPEX. I realize I didn't define it, but this is going to be your like depreciation, your um, kind of like the costs that you would incur pursuing new projects that you aren't going to get. So like, for example, like marketing costs. Um, this also is going to be your SG&A, which stands for selling general and administrative um, so this would be your salaries, um, also probably some of your like marketing, probably your office rent, um, you know, like utilities, uh, professional fees. So like if you had to pay an accounting firm, insurance, right, that would be another big one. So all of this, right, is stuff that would happen at a company level and not a project level. So we're not gonna be forecasting any of this for our project. But what we are gonna be forecasting is we're gonna be forecasting our income and then our COGS, which would be our cost of goods sold. Now, drilling into this, our income could probably be broken down into three kind of buckets, which would be our new contracts, um, I'm gonna misspell contracts, slash like our projects that we've gotten, right? It would be our work in progress revenue. So that would be revenue we would get as we kind of hit certain milestones in the construction project and then change orders. So that would be, hey, midway through the contract, someone changed something. So all of these would be buckets that we would want someone to forecast, right, if they were running a construction company. The next thing that we would want to forecast would be our COGS, right? And if we're running a construction company at a high level, we can probably assume that we're going to be dealing with, you know, our direct material cost, our, like, labor for, like, our construction workers, um, our subcontractor costs, right? our equipment, like rental um, costs, and then like our project overhead. So that would be, for example, like temporary facilities, site security, anything that would be like project specific and not company, company wide overhead or like operating expenses. So we're gonna call this project overhead. Now, all of these are things that we can forecast into Power BI to get to a gross profit number, right? So we're we're re what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in inputs, right, of these four items or of these three items for income, and then of these five items for COGS, and we're gonna output a forecasted income, COGS, and gross profit number. So now that we have kind of what inputs we want to put into this dashboard, we now need to think about the user who is actually going to be entering those inputs in. And for this made up construction company, let's just pretend that we have four separate project managers running four separate divisions. So let's say that we have an electrical division, a plumbing division, a commercial division, and a residential division. So that's four, which means that we have our users right here and we have essentially our inputs and our outputs right here. So we'll say these will be our user inputs into our financial model. And then what we have will be our output, which will be a consolidated uh, company, income, COGS, and gross profit. So what is the usage pattern or like the intended usage of this dashboard? 
Uh, it'll be to get to company numbers or company forecast for the upcoming month uh, based on inputs from our four project managers to get consolid a let's say to get a consolidated company income cogs and profit number so after cleaning all that up we have a really 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 basic requirements document so we have our intended usage to get the company forecast we have our user profiles and i'm actually going to add one more in here of like ceo right ceo who uses dashboard to see full forecast, right? Then we have our user inputs and we have our output, our consolidated summary for the CEO. So that is a super, super basic requirements document. It is unfortunately getting a little late here. So if you want to see me get to the mock-up stage and then finally to the build stage of this dashboard, subscribe like this video and stay tuned for the next one because I got to go to bed. I'll talk to you later. Good night. <laughs>